I think you got most of what Lenny was saying about the, you know, these three main yes. features of Colt. So where, 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 where do you guys want to, where are you guys placing NAR then? Are, is, are well, you, I would say on or? all the points that Lenny mentioned, you do see resemblances with NAR mm -hmm. uh, on all those points. Now, there are a couple of other uh, points that are often made in connection with cults and are typical of many cults. Uh, some are the sociological dimensions and the psychology that's, that's involved, how people get sucked in and what it is that attracts them, and then how they become sort of uh, obsessed with the leader and what the leader has to say and the, the high regard for that leader and, and the unquestioning spirit that they, they have about everything and how willing they are to just follow the leader's instructions. Uh, there's that. There's also overt heterodoxy that's often associated with cults, uh, denials of fundamental uh, or, or key features of the Christian tradition, the historic Orthodox faith that the, uh, the different groups do have in common, different denominations have in common, the Orthodox have in common, the Roman Catholics have in common. Uh, still, there are these departures. So denials of the humanity of Jesus or denials of the deity of Jesus. Uh, completely different conception of the gospel, uh, and, and these are fundamental ways in which cults can, can differ, even on the nature of God. You know, arguably, uh, the Mormon tradition is more of a polytheistic tradition than it is monotheistic. Well, now, here is where NAR differs from cults of that sort, because uh, I do think that the, the psychological and sociological dynamics are at play and that people are uh, sort of deliberately, strategically put in a position to feel like if they're not experiencing the miracles, it's their own problem, it's their own fault, it's a lack of faith or what have you. And there's fear. I think it, it, fear is induced among, uh, you know, the rank and file within the movement who don't want to miss out on God's blessings and they think that they're just around the corner if they just hang in there, they'll experience them as well. And uh, so and they're reluctant to to walk away from it many times because there's uh, a, a kind of uh, uh, sometimes the censure is extreme, that there'll be a, an evil spirit that has to do with it. And nobody wants to be accused of that. We have very strong evidence that there are many in the movement that are sitting through church services at NAR churches and in our organizations, uh, wondering whether the things that they're hearing really are uh, true and whether the promises that are made are ever really fulfilled and realized. And, and uh, we're seeing people leave the movement. There is a movement mm -hmm. uh, now, it's a counter movement, a resistance movement, you might say, including people who have left the movement and have tales to tell about the damage they experienced emotionally, spiritually, psychologically in their families that were divided over the issues. And then theologically, people even reporting that after leaving, they're no longer sure that they were worshiping the real Jesus when they were part of the movement. So that psychological and cultural uh, sociological dimension of cult-like activity is, is present as well. And it's one of the main reasons why we hear from people asking, is it a cult? But the other one is where they, they've they provided themselves with some significant cover because as far as we can tell with our close research of the kinds of figures that we've been describing so far, uh, they do not deny any of the uh, elements of the classic creeds of the church. Some people think they do, or some people think they come perilously close to doing so. For example, uh, Bill Johnson has said he's, he's got a kind of kenosis doctrine concerning Jesus, according to which Jesus, although he was fully God and fully man while here on the earth, he uh, set aside the use of his divine power in all that he did while on the earth, including his miracles, so that when he performed miracles— Again, while he was still fully God and could have performed them, presumably uh, using his own direct divine energy, uh, he didn't. And he relied instead as a man of faith filled with the spirit 
on the spirit for the performance of all the miracles that he performed. Now that's not that's not in itself heretical, but you can see how some people would say, well, that is tantamount to denying his deity. Well, it's denying that his deity functioned a certain way, mm -hmm. but they still say explicitly that they believe that he was fully God. So that's a point of difference between NAR, typically a point of difference between NAR leaders who appear to be orthodox, but aberrant. That's the term that we've used uh, so far without definition uh, in, in many of its other teachings. So, uh, and I think this is strategic. There are many indicators that leaders in the movement and Bill Johnson and his uh, crew at Bethel Church in Redding, California, illustrate this effectively. Uh, they, they campaign and market themselves as if they are part of the Orthodox strain of the church uh, to waylay concerns about that. And then they do these add-on things that really define them as a church and make them distinctive mm -hmm. from the historic faith and novel. It is genuinely novel. Uh, so you have to go after those particular points if you can't uh, press them on questions of orthodoxy.